Hi, welcome to this short uh, demonstration of the new module by your analog audio design called DIM2. DIM2 is a two channel, um, well, dimmer, and when you order it, it comes in a box with the module, but also with two of these nice um, well, LED lights with a nice gooseneck. As usual with uh, your analog, there's gone a lot of thought into selecting the components for these. And even though this module does not make any sound, nor can you really do any patch programming or things like feedback with this, they can provide a really good solution. Uh, well, if you want to create kind of a light show uh, with your rack, because the LEDs are CV controllable, but when placed correctly, these can also just provide uh, light for your system. Once again, many thanks to the people at Your Analog Audio Design for uh, well, letting me uh, use and demonstrate this module. Currently, nothing is turned on. My softbox is turned on, of course, and my recording device, but the rack is not turned on and this is because I want to, to show you how to connect these lights. I hope you can see it uh, this way. So there's these notches in the, uh, not in the module, in these connectors. And there's these protruding bits on uh, the male parts of these connectors. So you line them up. This is harder to do with a camera in between. So you line them up and then you press down. So with down, I mean towards the module and then you turn this ring here on the connector uh, to the right or clockwise. The thing I'm turning is, it's like it's this, this part. So let's do that again for this light. So you line up the notches with the protruding parts on the connectors and then you turn this to the right. And then you have them connected. So let's zoom out a bit so you can see the module and the LED lights here. So you can turn these while connected this is not turn the gooseneck, this is just turning separately, which is really nice. So you can point these where you want. And of course the goosenecks are also uh, well, very, um, well, they are flexible yet sturdy. There's also no droop uh, to these connectors. As you can see, let's turn on the system to demonstrate what you can do with these. And I realize that my lighting is a little bit low and this is simply because I want to be able to demonstrate how much light these LED lights give off. By the way, you can connect uh, third party uh, lights to this, but well, be sure to check the manual for uh, the specifications, well, because there's limit to how much power you can draw from this module but well it's a lot i am not entirely knowledgeable about uh, light technology but the module can handle pretty heavy uh, lights so now these led lights are pointed towards my camera it's always hard uh, to show accurate lighting conditions in uh, videos but well, let's turn this towards the case let's turn off my softbox here and as you can see these provide uh, plenty light And you can dim these separately. 
by just turning the according knobs. So they go from 0 to 100% brightness and they follow a logarithmic curve. And well, we can turn down the other one as well with the other knob, of course. So these lights uh, operate separately. You can send CV into them. Uh, they will react to anything between 0 and 5 volts. So let me connect um, a select 2 here to link to and I'll just connect uh, one of these to one of the dimmers there. Let's turn up the brightness completely on the module itself. When you connect something to the CV input, like I just did, um, and currently select 2 is set to the maximum output, so it's sending out 5 volts. And when connecting something to these inputs, the knobs become attenuators for the CV signal. But well, like I said, there's 5 volt going in anyway. Let me visualize this on the scope. So there we go. I'm sure you cannot see the squares on the scope, but let me just tell you that when the line is there, we're sending out uh, zero volt. When I go below, we're sending out negative voltages with select two. Uh, well, dim two will not react to these negative voltages, but as soon as I rise above zero, 1 volt, 2 volt, 3 volt, 4 volt, 5 volt, and then the lights are at their maximum. And as you can already notice, even though I have connected only one cable here to one of the CV inputs, the second LED light follows the first ones. And that's just because the second CV input here called DIM B is normalized to the first CV input, DIM like I said, the knobs become attenuators uh, and these are still separate for the two uh, LEDs. So when I turn this one completely, the CV I'm sending into the first input is attenuated completely, so it does not matter what a voltage I'm sending in, this left LED here, uh, the A light is not going to light up, but the second one, which I haven't attenuated, will still light up with incoming CV. Sending in anything more than 5 volts won't have any effect, by the way. And as clever as this module and these uh, LED uh, lights are designed, there's really not much more that I can tell you or show you about this. But, well, let's just send in some CV. And by the way, there will be uh, flashing lights uh, as soon as I start connecting uh, LFOs, which I'm about to do. So please, people with uh, epilepsy or, well, some kind of sensitivity to flashing lights, well, just just turn away or maybe stop watching the video. So there we go. I've connected the output of Contour 2, which is looping at the moment. And you can see this is really, really flashy. Maybe if I connect an output of Orbit 3, let's use the EP output and let's switch it to audio rates. So 
So there you have it, there's instant horror game uh, ambient lighting. I could just use one of the chaos outputs of Orbit 3, but then let's turn down the frequency a bit. You can see it on the scope going completely haywire. Let's change the sensitivity of the scope a bit. There we go. And let's use another output of Orbit 3. And by the way, Orbit 3 is going below zero or, well, the chaos outputs of Orbit 3 that are going through the scope and into the first CV input here are bipolar signals. Sometimes they go below zero. At that point, the light will just turn off. Let's connect a second chaos output of Orbit 3 which is not being visualized on the scope. And let's send that to the second uh, CV input here. Let's slow it down so you can actually see the difference. And maybe I should... Uh, connect some sound. I'm connecting these to the CV inputs of the, well, the VCAs in Morph 4. And let's just use the Generate 3 Brothers here to generate some sound. And this one to the other channel. Let's increase the frequency of Orbit 3 again. And, well, since we're here anyway, let's connect some cross-modulation. I know you can't see it very well, but I've connected uh, two outputs of Orbit 3 that are next to each other, so they are sort of out of phase but let's connect two um, opposite outputs so a positive and a negative version of the same uh, movement this should give us a um, stereo image that is well, kind of symmetrical if you know what I mean Let's introduce a little bit more modulation Maybe coming from filter 8. Let's, well, let's use the sync inputs. I always think this is an underused feature of most modules, especially of the your analog range because they, uh, well, the sync inputs react to virtually anything that you send in there. And if I now start modulating the levels of the harmonic outputs that I'm using uh, to cross-modulate between these generic trees. Well, those becoming 
an interesting situation altogether. Well, at least I think so. Let's turn down the frequency on everything. And right now I'm really just creating a light show, but I'm sure I will use this module and its lights instead of LED cables, because LED cables are sometimes, well, they just break very easily and they take away a little bit of voltage, which can cause some modules to not react like intended. And by using them too, that's a cleaner way of visualizing a signal, I think. At that moment they are just uh, giant replacements of the built-in LEDs in those modules. Anyway, like I said, there's not a lot that I can demonstrate about this module and its lights. They are just, well, of course, completely over-engineered, uh, which is exactly what I expected uh, Uranlock to do with these. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video a little bit useful. See you next time. Bye.